Hello, everyone. It's Thursday, June 3rd, 2021, and you're listening to the Fights We Love podcast. I'm your host, Alex O, and today we're going to be talking about Cody Garbrandt versus Rob Font. In this episode, we're going to do a quick overview of the fight and then just jump right in, get straight to the main event where we're going to do a round-by-round analysis. So awesome fight we got going on today. I love this fight. Really, really interesting performance out of both guys and just a ton of good stuff technique-wise to dig into for this episode. So thank you for tuning in. And if you like what you hear today, give me a like, give me a follow, tell a friend. Every little bit helps. (laughs) And yeah, so I hope you enjoy the analysis now. Let's get to it. got Cody, no love Garbrandt versus Rob, no nickname, Font. And this fight it took place earlier this year, May 22nd, in Las Vegas at the UFC Apex facility. Now at the time, Rob Font was ranked number three, taking on Cody at number four. So Font came into this fight on a three-fight win streak, including a TKO win over Marlon Marais. And for Cody, this was his first fight back after... About a year-long layoff while he was out with a couple injuries. Great stylistic matchup here. Both guys pretty boxing heavy. Font likes to stay behind his jab, and Cody likes to throw a lot of hooks, and he likes to throw a lot of hooks both on the lead and the counter. Before we get into the fight, there's a couple terms I want to define um, that I'll be bringing up today. So the first one is a shuffle step, and this is when a fighter is moving forward in their stance, and they're sliding their rear foot forward a little bit and then pushing off to take a step forward with the lead foot. So we'll talk about how Font uses this a lot to get into range and also almost uses it as a feint on his jab to fake his forward movement. Second term I want to talk about is a jab step, and we've actually talked about this before. This is when a fighter is faking a step forward on their lead leg. So kind of like in basketball, when you're out of that triple threat position, you start faking your lead foot forward to fake a step. So it's similar to the shuffle step, but it's more of a juke. In the shovel step, you're actually moving forward a little bit. So there's a bit of a nuance there, and we'll, we'll be discussing these terms and their application at length in this breakdown. That brings us to the main event, so let's get right into it. Round one starts, and right away we see Font come to the center and get started with his feints. At 449, we see him double pump his jab feint, then he switches to a southpaw stance. Two seconds later, at 447, he double pumps jab feint out of southpaw and then switches back to orthodox. And then at 442, he shoulder feints his straight right. So first 20 seconds, multiple feints, multiple jabs, multiple straights. And Garbrandt, he's trying to control the center and close the distance, but he's reacting every time Font shows one of these fakes. And he's stepping backwards every time Rob feints. So they trade jabs a little bit back and forth. And at 425, Cody lands an a right calf kick as Font jabs and circles to the left. So Font, what we're seeing here is Font is fainting very well to start things off. He's the one that's controlling the center a little bit more and moving Cody backwards with his feints. And he's using a variety of different feints. He's pumping his jab. He's shoulder fainting. He's shuffling forward now. And he also showed a quick stance switch and then switched back to orthodox. He didn't throw anything out of it, but he just showed the stance change. So there's a lot for Cody to react to right off the bat here. And for Cody, so he's landed that right calf kick, which is really nice for him. So because Font is fainting well to start things off, he's also heavy on his lead leg. So he's going to be trying to get that jab set up, and he's going to be stepping forward and putting a lot of weight on that front leg. So that's where Cody can strike and try to take advantage of his stance. At 423, we see Font back Cody up again, and he's using a mix of jab steps and shoulder feints. And I just want to notice every time Font feints forward, Cody's rear hand, it twitches forward, and he steps backwards. So he's reaching for that parry, and he gives up ground. And this is putting him on the outside of the cage. 
rather than controlling the center or engaging in the center. And you can see that Cody does want to counter and he does want to engage here in the center, but he's forced to react to each and every one of these little feints. All these small movements, these shoulder pumps, these jab pumps, these jab steps, they're making him react first and then stop his attack and then wait for the next opportunity. And he's just got his finger on a trigger waiting for this counter opportunity that's not really presenting itself. And when Font does throw the jab, it's at a time that Cody's not really expecting it so it's very difficult to get any sort of counter game going on on an opponent that's fainting very well like font is here so they spend some time feeling each other out mostly poking and trading jabs and again you, you could tell cody wants to counter but he's just not able to get much off because of how much font is fainting so he's kind of pulling his game back and starting to jab with font uh i like to see him try the calf kick a little bit more as font keeps stepping in and so try to like pull backwards and step a little bit backwards and then f swing that kick or faint a punch up top and then swing the kick as font steps in so we'll, we'll be looking for that we get down to about 312 cody jab faints font reacts by shifting backwards into southpaw and then he switches back to orthodox so we've seen font go to the southpaw stance about three times now and immediately switch back to orthodox he's switching a lot but he's not really doing anything with the southpaw stance it seems to be more of a distraction than a tool so the switch is a feint in and of itself so he's showing cody a different stance gets him looking at that thinking about it and then switches back to keep him guessing you mix that in with the jab feints with the shoulder feints with the jab steps that's just more information to process for Cody. And it does make that counter game a little bit harder to find. We can see this in action at 252 when Font lands a jab as Cody moves backwards and then immediately after at 249 lands a one two over the top. So Cody was moving backwards, he gets hit by the jab, then he stops to jab himself as font steps in and he gets caught over the top of his jab by font straight right so font he's fainted the jab multiple times up to this point and then when he finally steps in with the straight right cody's not expecting it and cody's looking for his own counter jab but he just gets hit by the second punch that he wasn't sure was coming so the straight right lands clean on the side of cody's head above the ear and he lands hard after that, we see Font try to keep pressure on Cody with jab steps, and Cody continues circling along the outside of the cage. So down at 242, Font, he steps in, tries a 1-3, tries to land that right hook, and Cody, he weaves under the right hook, and as he weaves under, Font looks to grab a tie clinch after missing his hook, but Cody actually weaves, as he finishes weaving under, he throws a left hook and lands right over Font's right arm. So Cody sees the right hook coming really nicely, and he uses that head movement to get under and throw his counter left hook. And I want to keep an eye on his left hook for the rest of the fight. And so he's not really moving his head that much when Font is jabbing, but he's able to see the hooks coming nicely at least. And he's using his head movement there. And so if you think back to the Dominic Cruz fight, Cody used a lot of really good head movement there. And so he looked good bobbing and weaving, but I'm starting to notice he's not really able to slip and, and bob and weave under these straight shots and these, these um, jabs or these straight right hands that Font is throwing. We get down to 230 and Cody lands another calf kick as Font is stepping forward. So the calf kick is working really nicely for Cody. It's not landing frequently enough yet to deter Font from coming forward. In this case, we see he's still comfortable just pressuring forward and backing Cody up to the fence. He doesn't stray away from his jabbing game. So you want to keep in mind one thing at play here is that if you do want to take away your opponent's kicking game, a good way to do that is by keeping your opponent on the back foot. So while the risk for Font is being hit with the kick while he's stepping in with his jab and he's stepping forward into range, if you keep up that pressure and you keep moving your opponent back, you can make it harder for them to keep throwing it. So for Cody, he wants to keep the center of the cage or keep the fight off the outer cage so that he has more freedom and more space to keep throwing this low kick backed up against the cage that puts him in a dangerous spot to throw kicks from right so moving on at 224 we see font step in and lead with a right uppercut out of his orthodox stance cody slips inside and circles away away from font 
Both times Font has looked for a hook or an uppercut, Cody's been able to see it coming and slip, so he's doing a great job using his head movement against these looping shots. It's these straight shots that he now has to start addressing. We get to 216 and Font is following as Cody circles along the outside and Font jab steps and Cody backs up again. And I really want to highlight just how much Cody is reacting to these small jab steps and fans forward by Font. It doesn't take a lot of energy from Font to do this. By this point, it's really just built into his natural movement and style. But for Cody, he's actually spending a lot more energy to back up and then come back into range and move along the outside. He's giving up a lot of ground every time he does this. So this is what's keeping him circling on the outside of the cage and making it hard for him to get any offense going from the center. And he does a lot of his best offensive work from the center of the cage when he's forcing his changes in that open space. So they return to the center. At 204, we see Cody step in with a 1 2, and then he shifts forward into a southpaw left hook. Font retreats in his stance and catches a combination on his guard, and he goes to a long guard as Cody shifts forward. So it's a nice move by Cody to get his offense going and land on Font's guard. And the combination effectively gets Font moving backwards. So even though you're not landing clean on the chin, there's a couple wins here. First, you're landing on the guard, and you're making them feel the impact of your punch and making them feel your power. Second, he's getting Font moving backwards. And the unfortunate thing about this combination is that almost immediately after Cody lands it, he backs up as Font steps back into the center. And Cody backs himself right up to the fence. And he's kind of undone all of that work to claim the center and to get Font moving backwards and relieve some of that forward pressure that Font is coming with. So Cody has kind of done a lot of work for Font just by stepping back to the fence, and he now finds himself circling along the outside. Font is cutting the cage with him, and he's keeping him on the end of his jab now. And at 150, we see Font, he lands a front kick to the chin as Cody is circling along the outer cage. And the kick goes straight through Cody's guard, lands right on the chin, and snaps his head back. Font tries to follow up with some shots, and Cody takes him down into a double leg. So a little bit of grappling going on, and then Font's able to scramble to his feet as Cody looks for some ground and pound shots. At 103, we see Cody level change, and Font doesn't really react here, and not much comes out of it. But I do like to see it, because the thing with feints and level changes is that they get more effective over time, and they get more effective when used in volume. You can throw them out every once in a while, like one at a time, but your opponent will start to wise up to it. But if you keep doing it the way Font is doing with his jabs and with his jab steps, it's having a direct impact on Cody's ability to keep striking with him, and it's having a direct impact on Cody's footwork in, inside the cage. So going forward, I'd really like to see Cody bring that into his game as well and continue to go to the level change as he tries to get his attack going, especially because now he's landed a takedown. He's made that threat real. So you start level changing, you start showing fake shots, and then you start showing real shots. Rob will have to respect that, and he will have to change what he's doing because if you have a lot of forward movement and you have a lot of weight heavy on your lead leg, these takedowns are going to be harder and harder to fight off. So we get down to 56 seconds, and Font again has Cody on the fence, moving along the outside, and Font double jabs into a straight right, and he lands clean on Cody's chin. Cody's not able to react in time to this one. He doesn't see the right hand coming behind the jabs. So now we're seeing how effective Font's fainting has become. He spent all of the rounds showing jab feints and showing shoulder fakes for a straight right, and the two times he's gone to it, he's caught Cody completely by surprise. That's what effective fainting does. It disguises your intentions and it keeps your opponent guessing so that when you finally do step in with the shot that you want, they don't know it's coming. I also want to note that Cody's hands are a little bit out of position here defensively. They're out in front of him instead of up by his chin in a protective shell. And that's why that front kick we were talking about earlier, it caught him straight down the middle of his guard. And that's why Font's right hand also comes through untouched here too. So he's got his hands up, but they're not actively moving to de defend these shots. 
We see another example of this again at 49 seconds when Font, he lands a couple more one-twos. So he's cutting the cage and Cody is circling along the outside. Font jab steps to draw out the reaction and Cody ducks down and then he steps in with the one-two. And then Rob Font follows up with another jab and then another one-two with Cody backed up against the cage. So a couple things here. First, Font, he's still keeping Cody on the fence, and he's jab-stepping or jab-fainting to draw out Cody's reaction first and then stepping in with his combination. The combinations, are they're short and sweet. He's throwing quick one-twos or double jabs into the two. And we want to look at Cody's hands again because, again, they're up and they're not actively protecting himself. He's not reaching them forward to deflect punches or, like, going to a long guard, and he's also not holding them close to his head to shell up. They're almost static in this position in front of him as font throws five punches in a row and he's landing these punches so it's possible cody's just keeping his hands you know up and ready for the counter because he does like to move his head and he likes to slip and counter with hooks but this gets harder to do when your opponent is throwing straight punches with you backed up against the fence so we get to the end of the round and with 14 seconds left we get one more good exchange. We see Font, he comes forward behind his jab and he throws a rear uppercut. Cody, he looks for the right hook counter over Font's jab and then shifts forward into his southpaw left hook and he lands over Font's uppercut and catches him by surprise. So Font was able to land the jab coming forward with Cody looking to attack off his back foot, but Cody's shift, it puts him in better position to land that left hook over Font's right uppercut. And so Cody's left hook is starting to look really nice, especially when he shifts forward with it. And Font, he's great coming forward, but he's not doing so great on the back foot. So Cody really has to try to keep pushing forward and get his own forward pressure going. Round comes to the close. Fighters go back to their corners. So some thoughts. Font, we've seen, was able to take control of the center and move forward with jab steps and jab feints, shuffle steps and shoulder feints. And Cody, while he was able to get back to the center occasionally, he's giving up a lot of ground to Font every single time he retreats from one of these feints. And he's finding himself backed up against the fence a lot. So Font, he's been able to take the center and keep Cody guessing on his attacks and land jabs with Cody backed up. It's the variation and consistency in Font's feints. <laughs> Font's feints. And uh, that's what opened up Cody's defense so that Font could land his straight right whenever he wanted to and where he wanted to. He wants Cody on the fence, and that's just opening up more options for his arsenal. Cody, he's keeping up his hands, but not really in a shell and not really in a specific guard. They're just up, and they're static. So Font's straight punches and kicks are starting to slip through his guard. He's using head movement pretty well when he's avoiding hooks and uppercuts, and he's also landing that left hook well when he trades with Font. So some good things out of there, but some adjustments that do need to be made, especially to Font's jab going forward. In Cody's corner, we hear Mark Henry giving some advice. He's saying, when you're putting your head back to the right, that's when he's getting that too. Don't go back. Turn your head left or pop. So he's saying, stop leaning away and back from that right hand. Cody's other corner, man, he's kind of saying, like, he's long. Don't get comfortable standing there. Those one twos, that cross is coming, and I want you to look for the counter. So... They're kind of trying to address the right hands that Cody got hit with. He got hit with a couple really good ones that kind of stunned him a little bit. So they're trying to address the straight right hand. And it's good advice because they want counters off the right hand. The problem is the timing of the right hand, that's the mystery here. And that's what Cody's having a hard time figuring out. It's because the jab is what's effective and that's what's opening up the right hand for them. So even though they're telling him to counter the right hand, what Cody's not sure about is how to counter the jab and how to avoid the feints. And so because he can't address the feints and he's, because he's not able to address the jab, he's not going to be able to address the right hand. So it's good advice to stay away from the right hand, but if you don't know when that's going to be thrown, you can't really ap apply any sort of real counters there. We also hear Henry leave off with, when you're on the ground, stay tight, don't leave so much space. So if you're going to take the fight to the ground, stay tight and control the position before swinging. That's what he's saying. When you start swinging punches on the ground, that's when you give up a lot of space to your opponent. And that's usually what gives them room to scramble or stand up or wall walk in Font's case. So if you go back and 
watch any of Khabib's fights. When he gets his opponents down and against the fence, he always ties up the legs first and he takes away escape routes and then he opens up with his punches. Position first and then attack when his opponent doesn't really have a way out. We don't get to hear from Rob Font's corner in this one, so we go right into round two. And the round opens, Font and Cody meet in the center, and Font goes right back to taking ground and pressuring Cody to the fence. It's always it's just built into his movement. He always comes forward, feints, jab steps, shoulder shoulder feints, and he's just kind of always shuffling forward a little bit to move Cody backwards. And these little shuffle steps, he's not directly attacking with each one. He shuffles forward, sees where Cody goes, and then shuffles shuffles forward again effectively and methodically taking ground every time Cody reacts to him. At 451, Cody, he lands a right calf kick, and Cody goes down on his left hand while he kicks it through. So it's almost like he's going for a leg sweep, and I'm not really sure what the benefit of doing this is or how much more effective this is than throwing just a regular calf kick by itself. It's kind of like Cody's saying, but it could be a better angle for the kick to land, and the unorthodox style might be throwing Font off. So... We'll see if we see that again. Um, I've seen seen Cody go to a kick like this before in other fights, but um, I'm just I'm just not really sure how much more effective that is than a regular calf kick. It's almost like a break dancing move, right? After the calf kick, Font tries to pressure Cody forward with a one-two, but Cody ducks into a double leg and he lands a takedown off a knee tap. So on the ground, we see a really good sequence here. So we see Cody pass into half guard. Font tries to isolate Cody's arm, his right arm, and then he gets his guard back and tries to throw up an arm bar. Cody spins out of the arm bar, lands back in half guard, and then Font goes into a deep half. So Cody looks for a guillotine, then Font breaks out and grabs onto a Kimura. Once he gets on the Kimura grip, he's able to get Cody's arm behind him and starts cranking, and then Cody rolls forward and he's able to scramble out of this mission attempt and get back to their feet. So awesome, awesome grappling exchange here, and it's something we see fun. He's active off his back. We're able to see Cody scramble to escape a really close attempt, and it's just about two minutes here of really active grappling. Um, and something to remember here is that these grappling exchanges, especially ones as crazy as this one, very taxing on the gas tank. And so there's a lot that could change after this one grappling sequence here. They get back to their feet, and at 258, we see Cody backed up to the fence again. And when Font steps in close this time, Cody leads with a straight right hand into a left hook. And he's again shifting forward into that southpaw stance to land the left hook. So this is what we need to see more of. If Cody's going to be fighting on the outside cage like this, he needs to be leading exchanges too. So it's okay to keep the fight on the outer cage, but you either need to keep moving along the outer cage so as not to get stuck against the fence or pressure forward with your own combination or your own feints to stand, stand your ground. If you just stay there and let people push you back to the fence, you're going to get into a lot of trouble. So I like seeing Cody on the lead here. At 2.52, we see Font step forward with a couple jabs and he lands a second one. And the jab goes straight through Cody's guard. So these jabs of fonts, they're so quick and snappy, and they're really hard to parry because they're coming straight down the pipe and they're flying through the middle of Cody's guard. Now, if you're Cody, of course you want to be parrying the jab, and it's easy for us to be, you know, sitting and watching the fight and saying, like, why isn't he reaching that rear hand forward? Why isn't he, like, knocking the jab away with a parry? Well, of course he wants to do that, but that's how quick these jabs are from Font, and that's how difficult it is at this level to just parry these jabs away. He's seeing them coming, but he's not able to react to them in time, and you're adding the feints on top of that. So being able to time that parry is not as easy as just Font throws a jab and you knock it away. Font's throwing multiple feints and then jabbing, and Cody's kind of like on edge trying to react to every little thing, and that's when the jab breaks through his guard. So we see a few more uh, jabs trade, and then at 228, Cody steps forward with a 2-3. And we see Cody land the left hook inside of Font's guard, so Font retreats, and he doesn't really swing a counter as Cody presses forward. Now, Cody's fighting off his back foot a lot, but he is creating good opportunities for himself when he pressures forward from the outer cage. Font is aware of the right hand, but he's mostly looking for these big right hooks and these overhands from Cody. So when Cody steps in behind a quick straight right, he's able to catch Font and open up his left hook behind it. 
Now, Font, he responds right away at 226, and he comes forward back through the center of the cage, and he triple jabs to back Cody up and follow with a straight right and gets Cody back onto the fence. So, again, pay attention to Cody's hands here as Font comes forward with the jabs. They're up, but they're not moving out to meet, meet the punches or moving back to his chin to cover up. They're stationary while Cody is trying to move away from these punches with his feet. With his feet. And... You know, it's a little bit troubling to see Font just come forward with three jabs right down the middle, not have any of them parried away or blocked away. And I, I know I mentioned that it's difficult to parry them, but in this case, the hands aren't moving at all on defense for Cody. So there needs to be a little bit more activity with his hands to try to knock away these punches. We get down to 201, and we see a really nice sequence out of Font to land a jab. First, he shuffle steps again into range. Jab steps to draw out a reaction. Cody reaction shows the right hook counter. And then Font fires the jab and beats Cody to the punch, landing while Cody is winding up a right hook. So this is why Cody's having such a hard time landing counters, and especially landing a right hook counter. Font is feinting his entrances, and he's reading what Cody wants to throw first, and then he fires his shots. He's a master of disguise. You don't know if he's going to step in for real or not. And the jab step, it gets you to show your hand first. By the time Font does step in with a real shot, you're a split second too late on the counter. So Font keeps walking Cody backwards. And then at 151, we see Cody level change and Font backs up. So Font immediately steps back reactively because now Cody's landed two takedowns. And that's put Font on notice. And that's what you have to do to create some breathing room for yourself because it's not likely that Cody's just going to be able to continue to stand his ground and find counters as long as Font keeps him on the back foot and at the end of the jab. So things like the level change here are useful tools to start taking ground and turning Font's game plan against him and get him backing up instead and marching yourself into the center of the cage. You can see Font reacts immediately here and he tries to get his hips back and taking it back to Khabib again. This was a big, a big problem for just about every single one of Khabib Nurmagomedov's opponents. The threat of the takedown forced his opponents to keep their hips back and that hurts your ability to create forward pressure when you're striking. So that's something to consider if you're in guard Brandon's corner. You have an opponent that's giving heavy forward pressure and leaning heavy on that lead leg. So there's a vulnerability there to take downs and level changes. We get down to 143 and we see Font land another jab with Cody backing up along the outer cage. And this one, again, goes right through Cody's guard. And Font's not landing completely clean every single time he jabs, but he's keeping Cody at the end of his range. He's really just touching him on the chin. And of course, it's a le little bit harder than just a quick touch, but he's kind of just like tapping him on the chin and he's not stepping in far enough to really snap Cody's head back. But at this pace and this early in the fight, just getting these quick little touches, it's enough to keep finding his range and keep Cody out of his range. And Font is just dialing that jab in a little more with each one. So Font looks to follow up with another jab right after at 141. And now Cody lands a beautiful cross counter over the jab. So very well-timed counter here. And between rounds, we heard Mark Henry saying to stop going and leaning back to the right away from these punches. And while he was talking about the straight right from Font, it does apply here as well. Cody, instead of leaning away from the jabs, now he's slipped inside and landed his right hand over the top of Font's jab. So that's a good counter here and something that we want to see more of. It is a nice deterrent to a jab-heavy opponent, but you also have to keep in mind that these kinds of counters, these these are like hair-trigger counters where you have to be ready for them. And so it's a good option to counter a, a jab-heavy opponent, but it does get a little bit harder the more your opponent faints, like Font is doing. So good counter from Cody, but he's going to need to land a little bit more to get Font thinking about moving backwards. In this case, Font just keeps walking Cody back and pumps jabs in his face, and it does seem like Cody is starting to slow down a little bit. So we're in the back half of this round, a couple big grappling exchanges under their belt now, and Font hasn't really given Cody any room to breathe at all. It's exhausting for Cody to constantly be, be on his back foot while he, Font just keeps entering range behind double and triple jabs. It's relentless activity. Because if the jab lands, great. If not, it's still setting up the next jab and the one after that. Font doesn't really need to keep landing hard here. He just has to keep up the pressure and touch Cody's chins every once in a while. 
So we get down to 55 seconds and we see another awesome sequence of feints out of Font. At 55 seconds, Font, he shoulder feints, switches his southpaw, hand fights, switches back to orthodox, and lands a front kick to the body. He follows up to land another jab at 46 seconds, steps backwards, steps jab steps forward, and then pivots his rear foot inward to fake that he's going to fire a straight right. So there's a ton of diversity here, just stance switches, hand fights, jab steps, constantly keeping Cody guessing and constantly building one set of feints into the next. And we've talked about this a lot with Kamaru Usman. That's what makes him so good, and that's what makes him stronger as the fight goes on. It's when you're using a certain set of feints and then adding new ones on top of that and reading your opponent's reactions and able to start opening up your offense off of those feints. And Font still hasn't thrown anything out of Southpaw yet, but it doesn't really matter. It's just a quick switch to show Cody a different look, get him thinking about it, and then he switches back to Orthodox and gets to work again. So the round closes out with Font landing a few more jabs and a few more straight rights to co with Cody on the fence. Now, it's starting to look like an adjustment needs to be made to Cody's guard because Cody's having a, a hard time mounting his offense against Font's jab. So the next best thing you can do is take away the jab with your defense. It appears like Font's jab is too hard to parry. It's quick, it's snappy, it's going straight down the guard, and it's difficult to time because of the constant feints. And that's hard to react to because of how fast it is. So what are your options here? Because, well, if Cody starts carrying his hands a little bit closer to the chin and gets his shell up, he can at least start catching these jabs on his forearms. It might hurt his counter game overall, but after eating so many jabs, the priority should be first to close up that hole and then starting to work on the ways to get your counters going. You might even consider going to like a Philly shell style since Fond is focusing on landing punches more than kicks. You have that option and Cody can work more towards rolling the jab off of his lead shoulder and then slipping and countering. But that's just, I'm just kind of like brainstorming some possible adjustments there, but something has to be done about the jab. And what's what you've done so far has not worked well because Font has la landed countless jabs up to this point. So a couple options there. And obviously there's more difficulty in application, but it's kind of fun to brainstorm sometimes. So, some thoughts on round two. Well, Cody started the round well with the takedown, but Font started to really pull away once they got back to their feet. We see Font is still dominating the center of the cage, and he's keeping Cody back on the fence. His jabs are starting to land with more frequency. Cody has found a couple good answers for the jab, but he hasn't been able to implement them with consistency. He's landed a couple calf kicks here and there. He's landed, you know, that cross counter that we saw, but... It's not enough yet to keep Font from doing what he's doing. He's taking the, the shots every once in a while, but he's still going forward, keeping the forward pressure, and still jabbing. So the pressure and the pace and the grappling exchanges, those are starting to wear on Cody's gas tank now. And Font, he actually looks like he's keeping a pretty steady and manageable pace for himself. In Cody's corner, we hear Mark Henry, he's saying, try to bring a little bit of pressure, try to get that head left. Or inside and he's saying you can counter into your shot too. counter punch and then shoot so try to slip throw a right hand drive into a takedown and mark henry is also saying he's starting to dip a lot so do counters low into the body first start countering to the body and then counter to the head so he's noticed that cody's kind of head hunting a little bit and he's trying to get him to go low and he's seeing that when cody starts to throw his counters font is dipping low so that opens up the body for him and again we still haven't heard from rob uh rob font's corner yet so we'll see after the next round so we get to round three round starts font takes the center and cody circles left along the outer cage right off the bat we see Font land a right hand. So at 4.57, we see Font faint one jab, faint another jab, and then steps in with the one-two, landing the straight right as Cody circles away. And you can see the reaction of Cody to the first two feints, and when he starts trying to move away, that's when Font steps in with the real attack. Immediately after that, at 4.53, uh, we see Cody faint a jab of his own, and then he lands a jab down the middle of Font's guard. So Font hesitates after the feint, and then he's hit when he steps in to try to start his own attack. So there you go. If you find yourself struggling with your opponent's offense, 
It's always a nice little trick to do what they're doing to you back at them and see how they like it. So the fonts for Cody, they are working. The level changes are working. It's there for him if he starts doing that consistently. We just haven't seen him do that enough yet. But the options are there and they're available for him. We're, it's not like he's just not landing a single shot at all. The shots are landing when he throws them and when he sets them up. We just need a little bit more frequency in that. At 444, we see Font double jab into a straight right to the body. So now he's getting a nice high low going behind his jab. That double jab up top keeps Cody's hands high. And then that opens up the body for Font to land the straight right as he circles away. So I like seeing good high low combinations there. At 440, we see Cody land a nice right calf kick as Font steps into range. And Cody catches Font as he's coming in heavy on that lead leg. And so Cody's landing these calf kicks clean, and you can see Font, he gives it his lead leg a little flex this time. So that's usually a sign that these kicks, they're starting to sink in and hurt. And it really only takes like three or four really good calf kicks to change the course of the fight. A few more of these, and it's possible to get Font to start thinking twice about moving forward or start moving backwards to give himself some space to check the kicks. But you have to be consistent. You have to be heavy on it. We see these level changes and we see these feints working for Cody. And we're not really seeing him build off of it. He's using them occasionally. He's not using them frequently. Now, if you faint your jabs into your low kicks or you faint your jabs into your feints or you level change into a combination and finish with a calf kick, that's where you start to open up your offensive game from. So just some really good tools on display here. It just seems to me that Font is a little bit better at applying all of them and getting all of his tools to work together. Whereas Cody, he's reacting a lot more to Font's offensive game and he's having a hard time building some, you know, some synergy. Sorry to use a corporate word there, but he's he's having a, a hard time <laughs> synergizing and energizing and optimizing his offensive game. So <laughs> we get down to 434 and we see Font, he lands another good jab. And this one goes straight through Cody's guard again and this one snaps his head back this time. So Font, he's doing a good job timing these jabs as Cody steps backwards. And the jabs are getting harder and harder with each passing round. Font is dialing that jab in. He's, he's landing with more frequency, and he's landing them more effectively. Cody hasn't been able to parry them, and he's retreating on straight lines. He's moving straight backwards, and so that's just making it easier and easier for Font to come forward and land that jab. And Font is also clearly unfazed by the shots that Cody's landing because every time Cody lands a good counter, Font goes straight back to pressing Cody backwards. At 359, we see Cody land a nice counter left hook as Font steps in with a low kick. And again, Font, he gets tagged, but he goes straight back to jabbing. He eats the left hook and then methodically moves forward behind two jabs. And then he lands the third one as Cody starts looking for a right hook. So there's no breaks here with Font. You land a good counter, and he's like, okay, cool. Try it again, though, because I'm getting right back in your face. Now, is there an opportunity there to take advantage of that if you see him start to step forward again? I think so, because you know he wants to get right back in your face and get back into range to start jabbing again. So that's where I'd like to see Cody land a counter shot pull back, and then as Font follows him into range, fire that calf kick as Font steps forward onto his lead leg. That's how you deal with forward pressure. And again, when you have somebody moving forward constantly, you have to start thinking about your options and how you're going to able, how you get them to hesitate to move forward and how you get them to move backwards. And so you have to hurt them as they come forward. And it's just a little bit hard to do that off your back foot, but you have to take advantage of little lapses in footwork there. And when Rob steps forward to jab, that puts him heavy on the front leg, and that's what leaves him open to takedowns and low kicks. So we see this triple jab out of Font, and then he follows that jab up here with another one too as Cody backs up. And you can see Cody's the hands are out in front of him, but the one two it lands right down the middle of them. So these shots are getting more and more dangerous for Cody to be taking, especially since Font is getting him back up on the fence. And we heard his corner say that they don't want Cody on the fence, but if you find yourself anyways, how do you 
deal with it? How do you adjust your defense for the type of shots that you're going to take? Yes, it's nice to say, like, don't get on the fence and you don't have to take shots against the fence, but your fighter has been there several times. Sorry, more than several times. It's most of this fight, actually. And he's taking shots against the fence, so what can you do? There's not a lot of room for head movement. The parry, it hasn't worked so far either, so you can't keep going back to the same things that aren't working. You have to try adjusting as the fight goes on. Now, you can keep moving laterally, but Font, he's cutting off these exits with his jabs, so I think the best option on the fence is to try and shell up, get your feet back under you, and try to find your counters out of the shell, but Cody's not really putting his hands up and keeping them in tight to his chin or to his body they're just up and they're like static and they're not moving as these shots are coming in he can also try to take down off the fence too but the point being is when your fighters on the fence you got to get them to do something other than just kind of like stand there like a deer in the headlights and trying to react to these straight shots that are coming straight down the pipe they're really hard to react to when you're when you're backed up with no space so we get down to 310. We see Cody shoot a single leg and drive Font to the fence. Font defends and turns it into a clinch, and he's able to turn Cody against the fence with double underhooks. So Font tries his own takedown, and Cody rolls out of it, and then they go back to their feet, and Font gets right back to pressuring Cody against the fence. So after this clinch exchange, it actually seems that Font is much better off than Cody in the cardio department. And these exchanges, these takedowns, these clinch exchanges, they take a lot out of you. And you add that onto the pressure that Font has kept on Cody, there's going to be a bit of advantage in cardio for Font because he's the one keeping up the pressure. At 149, we see Font land a jab in a 1-2 with Cody on the fence. And so these combinations, these quick 1-2s, they're landing more and more and more as this round goes on. Problems tend to get worse as the fight goes on and we're seeing them start to pile up as font sticks to this game plan the jabs that were previously touching cody just tapping him on the chin they're starting to snap his head back cody's moving a little bit to get off the fence and it doesn't look like he has the energy to keep circling anymore so he's starting to get stuck there and now this is allowing font to throw his straight right with more frequency and land through cody's guard if you remember in the first round, he really only threw that straight right behind the jab two times, maybe three. But now he's just stepping in. He's constantly throwing that one, two. He's double jabbing into range and blasting that straight right. And he's landing it more and more. So the round comes to a close, and Font has just kept Cody at the end of his jab. And we see if we see a few good left hook counters out of Cody, but for the most part, it's it's Font with Cody on the fence throwing the one two. Some thoughts on round three. So to me, it looks like Font, he's starting to take over a bit now. He's building off the feints that he's laid the groundwork for, and he's using them to keep the pressure against the fence. Cody is still having a hard time defending against the jab, and the pressure is starting to wear on his gas tank as well as the grappling exchanges. Now we saw that Cody's not able to control the clinch on the fence. He's not able to land takedowns. And now Font is starting to open up more with his right hand the longer he keeps Cody on the fence. So he's landing that straight right with a lot more frequency. And he's starting to attack the body with hooks. Cody, he's eating jabs when he tries to lead with his right hand, especially that right hook. But he's also starting to land the left hook very well. So there's some good things that he could still bring into this fight from here. We get to his corner. Mark Henry is saying you got to start countering to the body. He's throwing and dipping. So... You keep countering to his head, and you're missing, so I want you to go low to the body or counter uppercut, but move your head with your counters and throw low when you slip. So Mark Henry is really stressing these counters to the body. He's trying to get Cody to stop headhunting. And for me, I'm, I'm a little surprised that we're not seeing them ask for the calf kick more too because it's been just absolutely money every time Cody's thrown it. It just hasn't been landing frequently enough. And I'm a little bit surprised that we're not hearing more about how to address the jab, too. They're asking for counters to the jab, but the core of the problem is dealing with the feints and dealing with the jab itself and then getting the counter off. Cody's not getting past that first step. He's getting hit by the jab every time, and it's easy to say, like, we need the counters off of it. But it's, 
it's more of a question of how do you get the counters off of it? Where does he need to move his head? Where does he need to move his feet? What does he need to do to see the jab coming a little bit better? How does he create that angle to see it coming a little bit better? There's a number of th questions that are probably going on in Cody's head right now where they're saying counter the jab, and he's probably going like, well, how do I counter the jab? So uh, I, I, I'm surprised that we're not hearing some information on that but maybe that's something that they've already talked about i don't really know i'm not in the corner so that's just something i'm, I'm wondering about as i'm watching this go through and in font's corner we finally get to hear it but it's actually hard to understand because i think they're speaking in code we're seeing we hear his coach say he's going put stamps if you jj then put a stamp then he reacts and the right hand will land so i don't know what that means entirely I would guess that JJ is the double jab, but what it is telling is that his coach is saying to wait for the reaction and then the right hand will land. So he's saying possibly double jab in, wait for Cody to react, and then land the straight right. And that would certainly fall in line with what we've seen out of Font so far. So there's a little confirmation bias there. And then his coach is also saying something like Pez. Pez is there, so level change, and then uh, the audio cuts off, so I can't here anymore so it sounds like they have code words for different techniques and there's a lot they're thinking a lot of steps ahead here that's the, the sense that i'm getting from his corner they're thinking about cody's reactions and how that opens up his other techniques so interesting contrast in corners here we get to round four round starts and they meet in the middle at 4.53, we see Font, he shows that jab step again, and then he lands a jab down the middle of Cody's guard. At 4.50, Cody lands a calf kick. So he throws it naked, and he lands it clean here. And again, it's just money every time he throws his calf kick. And so I'd really love to see him start to show some feints with his right hand, land the kick as he slips inside. Especially, like, if you really show that right hand and then slip inside and throw the kick at the same time, Font will be looking for a jab to interrupt Cody's right hand because that's what he's been doing this whole fight so far. And that would leave him heavy on the lead leg again. So it's it's a good option for Cody, especially if he starts to, you know, really set up this calf kick. We just need more of it. It's good, but not enough. For Font, he just has to keep doing what he's doing. He's had control over the fight, where the fight is taking place with Cody backed up to the fence. He has control over the range with Cody at the end of his jab, and he has control over the pace because he's the one leading the action with these jabs and with his jab steps. So he's got three huge aspects of the fight under his control. So we get down to 442, and we see another great sequence out of Rob Font here, and it really shows how this fight's going. So at 442, we see Font parry a jab. At 438, Font shows a hand fight, and then he feints a front kick. Then right after, at 436, he feints a straight right into a right high kick. After that, at 434, Font jabs forward, and then he blocks Cody's jab as he returns fire. So... The big thing that I notice here is the feints are still going. He's using his feints to set up the front kick and the high kick, but he's also seeing Cody's jabs well enough to defend. There's a distinct contrast here in the hand positioning of Font when he's defending the jab versus when Cody is defending the jab. You see Font, he has his rear hand up by his chin as he parries the first jab from Cody, and on the second jab, Font is throwing his own, and he keeps his rear hand up, covering his chin as he steps in with the jab. So it's significantly more effective how he's dealing with Cody's jab here, and it's active hands on defense. We're also seeing that he's starting to open up more. So he's doing this off of the groundwork he's laid with his feints from the previous three rounds. He's coming forward, but he's still fainting before he fires off these kicks. He shows the right hand first, then throws the right high kick. So I like that, and I like that he's changing his feints and he's changing his techniques off of his feints as the fight goes on. At 420, we see Font switch to southpaw and then back to orthodox. So again, I really like this. I just I don't really recall where else I've seen this where you're just switching really quick into southpaw and then switching back. And these movements, they do seem pretty minuscule in the grand scheme of things, but it's when you add them on top of all the other feints that Font has shown. 
you're overloading your opponent with information and you're slowing down that decision-making process just enough to create openings for yourself. Cody doesn't know if Font is going to throw something out of that southpaw stance, but he does have to react when Font does. At 359, we see Cody land a left hook. So he leads with his right hook shifts forward into that southpaw left hook. So going back to that shift in combination and it's landing nicely. I just want to see him keep the center of the cage after pushing pushing Font backwards. And that's kind of the story of the fight. Cody gets off the cage, moves forward into the center, and then Font immediately takes it back. And you'll notice when Font backs off, he does it momentarily and it gets right back on it. So as soon as he backs off from a combination, you see him start to shuffle step forward, start jab stepping forward. And it's those little like fake steps forward. That's what drives Cody backwards right away. So it's not as simple as Cody just standing in the center as Font comes forward. But he's he's reacting in a big way to each one of these little small steps and these these shuffle steps. They move Font forward and they get him into range, but he doesn't fire anything off it. He keeps his stance under him. He just slightly slides forward. And Cody, he slides backwards every time Font comes forward and takes ground. We get down to 252 and just another sequence that I really love out of Font. So first we see him reach his right hand forward to hand fight. Then he feints his right front kick forward and plants that right foot in southpaw. Then he throws the southpaw 2-3 and he lands the right hook with Cody on the cage. So absolutely killer from Font. Cody, you see him react. He reaches out for the hand fight. Then the kick feint brings Cody's lead hand down and now he's backed up against the fence and Font just opens up with that 2-3 and he lands that right hook really hard. So it's diversity in his combinations it's using his feints and showing different looks and now he's finally thrown something out of that southpaw stance so he's done multiple switches to southpaw and not thrown anything and now he finally fakes a front kick shifts forward and then opens up with the two three and lands it clean so he's just keeping cody guessing and he's really just overloading cody's decision making process and making it very hard to mount any sort of defense or offense on these combinations as he's going forward. After this, we get to about 241 and we see Font land a body shot combination. So he jabs to a right hook to a body, to a left hook and a straight right up top. So it's not just jabs and one twos anymore now. Font is getting Cody to the fence and now he's throwing three to four punch combinations and he's mixing things up high and low, attacking the body and attacking the head. And he's adding more attacks to the body to wide that gap in the cardio. He's really just starting to open up here because Cody, you can visibly see he's getting more tired and he's taking more damage from each of these combinations. And Font, he's really just pouring it on. That forward pressure is taking a toll. And so when we get down to a minute 46 left in the round, we see Font, he lands a one-two and a head kick. He double jabs into a straight right hand with Cody backed up against the fence, feints the jab, hand traps, and throws that right head kick. And you can see how Cody reaches for that hand trap he reaches his rear hand forward to parry the jab so he's reacting to the feint still in a big way leaving himself open to bigger shots and he gets hurt by this head kick so the more time cody is spending on the fence the more font is able to open up with his arsenal where in the first round it was just one twos we're in the fourth round now and it's hooks and uppercuts head kicks body kicks body shots it's all kinds of shots that are coming with Cody stuck against a fence and things are starting to snowball out of control. On the commentary, we hear Michael Bisping and he's kind of been saying Cody really needs to try and stay off the fence. And it's it's just funny to me because like, yeah, that's what we're saying. That's I'm sure that's what Cody's thinking too. I'm sure that's what his corner is saying, right? And we've heard them say, they're, they're saying, you know, get off the fence. How do you stay off the fence? And the question is, how do you get Font moving backwards and stay moving backwards? We've seen Cody back him up a couple times, but Font's been able to take the center back just about every time, using his jab and shuffle steps to faint Cody back. We stopped, We talked earlier about how Font, he's reacting to the level changes in a big way, right? He, he throws his hips back when you level change. Now, the other options you have available, you can try pushing forward and just go guns blazing. That does leave you open to dangerous counters, though. You can try shooting another takedown, but the, there's a pretty big cardio gap now in this fourth round, so that's a bit hard to overcome, and we've seen that Font is now stuffing the takedowns. So 
what are your options? Well, you could shell up against the fence and try to weather the storm, or you can try pushing forward and using your own face to take ground and force exchanges in the center of the cage. Cody is much better off standing and trading in the center than he is waiting against the fence for counters that he doesn't know are coming. So you have to try to find a way to get into the center of the cage, and how do you move Font backwards? You have to go to what's worked before, which is you feint him backwards, you level change him backwards, and then you march forward and when he comes back into range with his feints and his level changes you have to go and try to force the exchange there instead of backing off and f taking the exchange on the fence of course like all things easier said than done but those are your options the options that you've used up to this point they haven't really worked and you've gotten hurt pretty bad and it's getting worse as the round goes on so you have to try to adjust things and take risks in different areas because the, the spot you're in now it's dangerous and it's not working so the round comes to a close and we go back to the corners some thoughts on round four well font he's opened up his arsenal like we said he's got a sizable advantage in cardio now and he's now keeping cody backed up against the fence for longer periods of time and he's getting cody stuck there he was able to Font was able to land kicks to the body and the head and expand to three and four punch boxing combinations. Cody, he's still looking for counter opportunities, but there hasn't been an answer to the jab yet. And so if you can't really deal with the jab, it's harder to stay off the fence. In his corner, we hear Mark Henry's again stressing counter to the body. Keep throwing low. When he throws, he dips. So throw your counters to the body and you got to stop getting trapped against the fence. And then his other corner man, he's saying, you're getting frustrated after you're missing the first counter. So it's okay, throw three and four punch combinations. He wants Cody to be committing to these combinations. So stop waiting for one big shot and start throwing in three, four punch combinations. That's what you have to do. And you have to like kind of push forward now. And Henry goes, every time you lead first, you're doing great. And that's, that's what we've noticed. Cody is doing fine when he pushes forward and leads these combinations off of the outer cage. But he's backed up a lot, and the, the gas tank is just not there to constantly lead with three and four punch combinations. Theoretically, yes, it will work. But, you know, fatigue has set in, and Font, he's the more fresh fighter at this point, too. So it's not as easy as just, why don't you just go forward and throw a bunch of three or four punch combinations? So he has to pick and choose his moments when he has the energy to do it, and that's why it's a little bit harder for him to continue leading these exchanges. So we also got a lot of the same advice from last last round. I do like that the corner man is asking for combinations in three and fours, and he's trying to steer Cody away from those single shots. It's just, yeah, like we said, the, the gas tank, it may not be there for the fifth round. Um, but again, we also don't hear much about the jab. We hear them stress again to stay off the fence, but the jab is a problem that's keeping Cody on the fence, and we're not hearing direction on how to either counter the jab to avoid getting backed up to the fence or what to lead exchanges with in order to get himself going forward off the fence. Now, going low to the body is good, but that's when he can see the counters coming and these feints are preventing that. So again, nothing out of Font's corner. So I wonder if the uh, producers were listening to the corner and just not understanding a single thing and then just decided to stick with cor Cody's corner entirely or something like that. But I don't know. The one time we did get to hear of the corner, it was pretty confusing. So we get to the fifth round, round starts. And at the end of that fourth round it was starting to look like a pretty dire situation for cody but he comes out in the fifth round and right off the bat he looks significantly better he meets font in the center and he starts moving around the inside border instead of immediately circling along the outside and now cody is actively parrying fonts jabs too he does get hit a little bit because he starts trying to trade jabs but we're seeing a lot more activity with his defense when Font is throwing the jabs. You can see at 447, Cody throws his own jab while slipping outside of Font's. So that's what you want to see when somebody is up against a good jabber. It, it is taxing on the gas tank, and Cody, you know, he he's at a disadvantage going into this fifth round. But it's what you want to see. He's using different techniques to try to fight off the jab. He's slipping outside and throwing his own. He's parrying it. He's defending it. He's moving a lot better than he was in previous rounds. 
at 4.43, we see Cody. He throws a nice 3-2. He leads with a slap hook and then fires that straight right down the middle through Font's guard. Now, Font, he does catch it on his guard, and that's what I mean by you know, having active hands on defense when you shell up, you can see Font, he gets his hands up to protect his chin and he catches Cody straight right on his forearm. But for Cody, I do like this combination. He's doing great when he leads, like Mark Henry said. And this gets his left hook into the mix because he's already proven that to be a threat. That's been his best punch throughout this fight. So that slapping left hook, that creates openings for a straight right if he keeps coming back to this combination. At 439, we see Font. He comes back to the center with a jab. This time, he tries to follow up that jab, and Cody lands a hard cross counter over the top of the jab. So we've seen Cody go to that cross counter a little bit earlier in the fight, but now he's using that in addition to the other defense that we've seen in this round so far. We, see, we saw him slip outside the jab. We saw him parry the jab, and now he's throwing the cross counter over the top of the jab. Three different ways of dealing with the jab now. So I don't know what changed but because like i said i wasn't hearing a lot of specific advice around the jab in the corner between rounds but cody is already dealing with it in a much better way here and he's starting this round off really well and hurting font with his different counters and he's also engaging font in the center of the cage you'll notice that he's doing much better with the jab because he's not backed up against the fence anymore. He's got a lot more room to maneuver here in the center of the cage, and he's seeing the jabs coming better, and he's actively dealing with it. He's parrying and slipping outside of it. So it's much better to be in the center of the cage for him now and leading combinations and dealing with the counters than it is to be backed up against the fence where there's no space to move around. So we get down to 422, and the next minute or so is actually pretty interesting out of both guys. We see Font, he throws a front kick to the body, and then he follows up with a 1-2-1. One, one. Cody, he counters jabs with, he lands a couple good cross counters over Font's jab. At 349, we see Cody, he counters one of Font's jabs with a right hook to the body and then follows with a left hook up top. So there's that counter to the body that Mark Henry's been asking for, and we finally see Cody dip off to the side and go low and then come up top and so he's landing the, some good counters to the jab now at 328 font he feints a right front kick forward plants in southpaw and lands his southpaw 2-3 again so that faint forward is so nice and now he's landing shots out of the southpaw stance and so it's a pretty eventful minute so there's a lot of new things that happen in this minute we see that cody he's finding counters to the jab by going to the body he's also finding that cross counter and landing it nicely font he's getting his front kick going but he's also using that to disguise his stance switches into the southpaw stance and landing shots from there so there's a lot of groundwork that's been laid in the earlier rounds for font where he would switch the southpaw for a minute switch back and then keep Cody guessing but now he's throwing out of that stance and it's also catching Cody off guard because he's been trained up to this point to not expect shots out of it so really really cool minute there in this fight it's been a very closely contested round so far and great shots from both guys now we get down to 301 left in the round and we see Font he jab steps then he throws a jab Cody slips outside and fires a right hook counter and Font slips backwards away from it and lands a right uppercut that stuns Cody. When Cody, he threw his right hook counter, but we also saw him shift forward after throwing the right to throw his left hook. And Font, he slips back far enough and catches Cody moving into his uppercut. So that combination that we saw Cody going to earlier, where he would throw the right hook, shift forward into southpaw, and throw the left hook, that was working earlier. But now we see that Font saw it coming, and he's adjusted to it, and he was ready for it this time, and he lands his uppercut, and he stuns Cody. So it's it's really interesting to see here just how quick these guys, they, they pick up on things in there and start figuring out different counters. It's really, really high-level stuff, and it really shows how much you need to constantly be varying things up and constantly changing your attacks, and it kind of gives you know some credence to the fact that Cody couldn't just like go forward and just lead these exchanges and just you know march forward recklessly. That's what's gotten him into trouble in the past, and that's what Font is waiting on too because he's giving this forward pressure. So, you know, we were, we were talking about Cody needs to do this and that to get off the fence, but it's really, really difficult here because you're against a really smart striker like Rob Font. So 
everything that we talk about is just always easier said than done. But this is a really good example of why it's so much harder to do. Like you have an opponent in there that's reading and learning and adjusting on the fly. And that's why it's hard for Cody to step forward into these exchanges when he's backed up against the fence. He, the looks may be there and you might be able to see them there, but acting on them, that's what's difficult. So the rest of the round, it's, it's a little bit more of what we've already seen in the previous four rounds. Font, he's hurt Cody here, so he kind of lands a few more shots. He's using that double jab into the right hook or double jab into the straight right when Cody's backed against the fence, and he's landing really hard on the chin. So Cody's starting to get caught leaning back in a way. So he started this round really well, and he, he's, he looked pretty fresh, but as it wore on, Font just kind of like poured on the pressure and started hurting him and started getting back to what was working for him in the previous rounds. So the fight ends go to a decision and it's looking pretty clearly like it'll be a decision for Rob Font. Some thoughts on round five, probably Cody's best round. In my opinion, we saw some really, really good counters to the jab from him here and a lot more activity out of his defense. Font, he got hit by some hard shots, but he never really wavered from the game plan. Every time Cody landed something, Font, like we saw all fight, he would reset and go back to fainting and stepping forward behind his jab. And he was eventually able to weather the storm from Cody early in the round and take over again and stun Cody and hurt him pretty bad. Cody also did significantly better exchanging in the center of the ring. And it wasn't until he was on the outer cage that Font started finding those usual shots again. Some closing thoughts on the fight overall. I mean, overall, just a great fight out of both guys. Font would go on to win this fight by unanimous decision. He got 148-47. The other two scorecards were 50-45. So pretty dominant win for him. And for Font going forward, this win, it just keeps him, puts him right in the mix at the top of the division. And it sounds like he wants to face the winner of the upcoming fight with, between TJ Dillashaw and Corey Sandhagen. That was slated as a number one contender fight. And it's interesting because going into this fight, Rob Font was ranked number three. And after this fight, he's still ranked number three. So it's it's going to be interesting what they do here. As you know, the title picture is kind of on hold right now because Aljamain Sterling, the current champion, has to do a rematch with Piotr Jan, the former champion. But Aljamain Sterling has recently gotten uh, a neck surgery, so he's going to be out for a certain amount of time. So the title's held up between Jan and Sterling. Dillashaw and Sandhagen, they're the number one contender fight, but because the title fight may not happen for a while, they might just go ahead and put Rob Font in against the winner of that fight and keep the division moving. So I don't know. It's interesting what we're going to see there, but some some fun outcomes there. Either way, I want to see Font against everybody in the top, top five now. So title or not, I just want to see him fight, but I, I'm sure he should get his title shot pretty soon. We also saw just an absolutely lethal jab on display from Rob Font. I mean, he came in sharp with a disciplined game plan, and it just really showed here. He just never waved. You couldn't phase him from that forward pressure. And he showed a really good ability to continually claim the center of the cage and just keep on maneuvering Cody back to the fence. And that's something that every contender in this division should be looking for, ways to counter. You have to look at how you're going to deal with these fakes and these jab steps and these shuffles. And it's all about your cage craft in there against Rob Font. If you don't come in ready for his footwork and his fakes, you're going to lose on the fence as Cody did here. So the one one other thing, though, to mention is that these early takedowns from Cody, they did look like the only hole in Font's game that he'll want to keep developing because if you find yourself against, you know, these really strong wrestlers like Dillashaw or Aljamain Sterling, like, they're going to take you down and they're going to dominate the game from there and they're going to take away your jab by just constantly taking you down and constantly shooting on you. So that's something that other top... To, top contenders in the division should be looking at too those early takedowns were a little bit too easy for Cody at the time now for Cody tough fight for him but the, I still think there's a lot of good things to take away from him I absolutely think that training with Mark Henry's camp that's been a big benefit to him and so his chin it actually held up pretty well in this fight despite getting hit pretty hard by font at times 
Now, this loss puts him at fifth in the division, so there's still a number of interesting matchups for him there. Um, as far as the fight goes, I really love the way his left hook was looking, especially on the counter. I think he can build a really, really nice offense off of that, the way he was setting up his straight right off the slap hook. And so he doesn't need to you know, keep going forward with these big right hands, these right hooks, and these overhand rights. Those will be there, and those are always good knockout punches for everybody, but... This, the, his left hook, it's short, it's sharp, it's great on the lead with, when he uses it as a slapping left hook, it's great on the counter, and his straight right hand, that's also great for him there, so he's got some great tools that he showed here, and like I was stressing all fight, like I really want to see more of that calf kick, it's just, it was so good in this fight, especially because people are going to be looking at this and be like, oh, okay, I, get, I guess I could just, you know, try to come in there and try to jab Cody's face off, but that calf kick, it's money for Cody. So the times that he landed were great. He just needed to throw it more and more. And as he throws more calf kicks, that's just going to open up doors in his offense for him. So I love that. I love that addition to his game, and I want to see more of that. And I want to see some some ways that he can build off of that low kick into his left hook or build off that low kick and start using hand feints punch feints into that low kick there's so many options there for him and he's still young and he's still developing and he's you know kind of getting into his physical prime so there's a lot of great potential there for his offense out of this fight his feints I thought they were great when he used them too the times he was able to get Font moving back and you know relieving the pressure is when Cody was fainting forward and adding in those level changes too his takedowns look good. He landed the takedowns, so he needs those level changes, and he just needs to keep building off those feints the way that Font was doing to him. So tons of good stuff for Cody here. And, you know, it's a tough loss, but I think there's a lot of exciting things in Cody's game to look at moving forward. This by no means puts him out of the top of the division because it, Rob Font has just shown how good and intelligent of a fighter he is. So it's not a loss to be you know disappointed in I think because I just think there's a lot to move on from and there's a lot of good groundwork laid in this fight for Cody so great great fight out of both men I just really loved the technique that we saw on dis display here so that's our main event and man this Bantamweight weight division right I mean the top five in this division is just absolutely insane because every single one of these guys looks championship caliber i mean tj dillashaw former champion cody garbrandt for, former champion rob font possibly a future champion i mean the boxing he showed here was amazing we have Corey sandhagen who's just on this crazy terror finishes right now and then we have jose aldo up here too so i mean the top five is stacked, it's dangerous, it's diverse. The technique is incredibly high level there. Very everybody is capable of, you know, killing off another contender. It's just great division to be looking at right now. There are some fights going on this weekend. There's UFC Fight Night Rosenstrick versus Sakai on Saturday, June 5th. And that'll also be at the UFC Apex Center in Las Vegas. So some big boys on that card and you know, some potential to shake up the top of the heavyweight division there too. So that should be fun to see how that plays out. If you want to keep up with me during the week, you can follow me on Twitter at Fights We Love. I'm also on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. So if you like what I do, go ahead and give me a follow there and tell your friends. If you're still with me after an hour and 13 minutes, I appreciate it. And thank you for tuning in. I mean, Sometimes these fights, there's just so much, and I had to I actually had to cut out a lot of stuff too just to make this episode. So, yeah, if you're still here, thank you for listening. I truly appreciate you tuning in, and enjoy the fights this weekend. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks to talk about the fights we love. Thank you for listening.